Hello, welcome to Whole30 Day 1. January Whole30 Day 1, it is happening today, 2023. This is, gosh, is it the 13th or the 14th annual January Whole30? We've been doing this for a really long time, and I am so happy to be with you here today to talk through the Whole30 Day by Day, answer all of your day one questions, just hear about how your Whole30 started off this morning, whether it's your first Whole30 or your second or fourth or fifth. Come say hi today. I'm going to be here with you live just about every day of the January Whole30 to offer advice, motivation, tips, resources, and I'll be joined by a few Whole30 HQ team members in the chat to answer your questions. So good morning. Tell me how day one of your Whole30 is going. If you subscribe to the Whole30 YouTube channel, you will be able to join the chat and leave a comment, leave a question. I'll be able to answer them for you here live, so make sure that you click that subscribe button and then you can join. I don't know why I just said the word button like that. I would normally just say button, but that's what we're doing here today. I'm going to... Hey, Kate, welcome. All right, it's going good for Kate. Glad to hear it. Let me know if this is your first Whole30 or your second or third, if you're an alumni. If you're not doing the January Whole30 right now, but you're just tuning in live to offer support or advice or motivation to others, drop that in the chat too, but I'm glad it's going well. Good morning to Sleepy Hazel. Good morning. Where, let me know where you're um, writing in from too. Last night on our live, we had someone from... Australia. I think we had someone from Brazil. So people are coming from all over to tune in for day one of the January Whole30. That is really exciting. Michelle, it sounds like a really good breakfast. If there's one thing I can encourage you to do on day one of any Whole30 is to think about breakfast as meal one. I think sometimes people get tripped up when they think about what am I going to eat for breakfast if I'm not doing cereal, toast, oatmeal, and yeah, you can do eggs, but some people don't like eggs or some people, eggs don't agree with them. And eggs can get boring if you're going to have them every single day. I highly encourage you to think about meal one instead of breakfast. You can have anything you want for meal one. It doesn't have to be traditional breakfast food. In fact, if you've been following me for a while, I think you probably already know what my go-to meal one is and has been for a few years now. It is my patented template, ground meat with stuff over stuff. It's got a trademark on it. It doesn't, but I probably should because I talk about it so often. Ground meat with stuff over stuff is my go-to breakfast. I'm not a huge egg person. They don't agree super well with me and eggs don't give me enough protein. I eat a lot of protein because I'm really active in the gym and I have a lot of muscle mass and I find a breakfast that is ground meat with veggies with some kind of dressing or sauce over it super satiating absolutely tides me over until lunch my digestion is super happy with it it's like the perfect go-to meal for me so embrace the idea of meal one instead of breakfast uh, shakshuka for lunch. Yes, also embrace the idea of breakfast for lunch or breakfast for dinner. One of my absolute favorite meals to do here with my family is breakfast for dinner. So we'll like flip the script and we'll do a frittata with some crispy bacon and some avocado and a side of berries. And that is the perfect Whole30 meal any time of day. So yes, I love that idea. Let me catch up in the chat and see how people are doing. Egg frittata with spinach. That sounds amazing. It's your second Whole30 Fantastic. Hey, Brenda, watching from Wichita. Norin is here from Houston. Michelle has an emergency. <laughs> what can you put in your Whole30 coffee? It used to be, and I'm saying an emergency because if you're not used to drinking coffee black, it can be very not fun. And especially if your coffee isn't great coffee, it can taste really bitter. Back in the earliest days of Whole30, in like 2009, it was black coffee. If you recall the original, this is not hard language, it was like drinking your coffee black is not hard because that was all we had. You could shake up a can of coconut milk and pour some coconut milk into your coffee. It was not good. It was not good. So I just drank coffee black for many, many years. And then came nut pods. 
oh, my beloved Nut Pods, they were a Whole30 approved partner right out of the gate. Like they launched and immediately signed on to the Whole30 approved program. And now they make a ton of Whole30 approved unsweetened coffee creamers. It's a blend of coconut milk and almond milk. And they are absolutely delicious. And because they are unsweetened, but they do have this like really delicious hint of flavor, whether it's like vanilla or I think they've got a few holiday flavors like a mocha peppermint that may still be out right now. They just give a really delicious flavor to your coffee without the sweetness. You can also use a compatible unsweetened almond milk or coconut milk. So you can kind of find those in the dairy section of the freezer. Bubs is another Whole30 approved partner that makes an MCT oil creamer blend. So it's got a little bit of healthy fat in there. So it's going to be nice and satiating with your breakfast. And if you use a frother, it makes your coffee really, really creamy. So you have a lot of options now on the Whole30 for what to put in your coffee. It's just going to be no added sugar or added sweetener of any sort. But you can still have really delicious coffee or mud water, which is what I drink, or um, whatever you're having for your beverage in the morning. So hopefully, Michelle, I just made your day. I made your coffee taste so much more delicious. If you have a question, please put it in the question box with a letter, letter Q first so I can go ahead and see the questions ahead of time um, and kind of separate the questions from the comments. So Angela wants to know, where can I put blackberry jam other than pork? So I'm assuming that you've got this blackberry jam that you've made yourself. There's no added sugar. It's just maybe the blackberries, maybe some pectin. I find jam with eggs an absolutely delicious combination. I have been putting jelly on my plate when I eat eggs for like as far back as I can remember. Going back to, I don't know, 10, 12 years old. I have always loved jelly with eggs. I know it sounds wild. But I think it's an absolutely delicious combination. I think jam on any kind of meat could be delicious. So as a side with your chicken sausage, I think that could be really yummy. Um, maybe in, I'm trying to think of like another, maybe if you do like a sweet potato toast. So you do, do like a thinly sliced sweet potato. You could put a little bit of jam on top of that. Blackberries with sweet potato I think would be delicious. Get creative. I think that's the easiest and best way to think about your Whole30 meals is just get creative and put flavors together and see if they go. Some of my most beloved flavor combinations were inventions at the moment where I was like, I wonder if this is going to go well. I had a salad. I had some roasted salmon on top. I threw some blueberries in there and I drizzled the whole thing with hot sauce. Who knew that blueberries and hot sauce were such an amazing combination? I do now. And now maybe you do too. One of my other favorite flavor combinations that I started doing, I think last year, that I've turned a lot of you on to, take your Whole30 compatible meat stick, whether it's a Chomps or a New Primal, an Ayoba, an Epic, we have a variety of meat sticks that are Whole30 compatible and jerkies, dip it in some Kite Hill cream cheese. So Kite Hill makes Whole30 approved cream cheeses in a few different flavors. There's like a garden herb, there's a chive, there's a plain. It is the creamy texture for your meat stick that you have been missing. Hands down my favorite snack or mini meal of all time. So all of that to say, play around with different flavor combinations. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to go, these are two delicious Whole30 foods that don't go great together, but now I know. The best thing that's going to happen is you're going to discover that blackberries and eggs are a surprisingly delicious combination. I've actually thrown fruit into my omelets a number of times. I've also been doing that for years. So I make an omelet. I cook it almost all the way through. I will throw some berries in that omelet with some maybe basil, some spinach, and some chopped pecans. Flip it over, cook it a little bit more. It's absolutely delicious. I know you're thinking it sounds a little wild, but don't knock it till you try it. So look at me. We're talking about meal one and getting really creative here. And I hope that you are taking really good notes because I would love to see some of your fruit omelets tomorrow morning. Tag me in them on Instagram. I'm at Melissa U. Hi, Julie from Salt Lake City. Hey, neighbor. Hopefully you're all shoveled out. Um, we had some huge storms here. I, we got 19 inches of snow in the last 24 hours. Power was out yesterday. Internet was out. Thank goodness we are back in um, business today. Erin wants to know, are there other collagen options? Absolutely. So um, again, Bubs 
is a Whole30 approved collagen brand. Um, we have a link that hopefully one of them, one of my Whole30 HQ team members can drop into the chat for Bubs, but they make a delicious Whole30 approved collagen. I believe Primal Kitchen also has a Whole30 approved plain collagen option. Some of their collagens are not Whole30 approved because they contain a sweetener. So you would just want to read your label. But yes, Vital Proteins, Bubs, we have a few different options. I believe also Mind Body Green has a Whole30 approved collagen option. So yes, thank you so much for dropping that into the chat. You can find the Bubs link there. That is also a favorite of mine. Bubs just also came out with a new coffee which I think is so interesting and wonderful. I don't drink caffeine, so I haven't tried it, but I have a few packages here, so I'll be passing those out to my local Whole30 um, HQ team members. Meat Stick and Kite Hill, Brenda had that as a snack. Yeah, it's such a winning combination. It's absolutely delicious. So let's talk about Whole30 day one. I'm reading back through the chat. If you've got a question that I've missed, feel free to drop it in the chat again, and make sure you like this video that really helps us reach more Whole30 years and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can drop a comment into the chat. So we are going to talk about Whole30 day one and if you have your Whole30 day by day book, we you can follow along. You can open the book to page 20 which is day one and follow along and if you don't have the book, don't worry about it because we're going to be talking about what's in the book. Whole30 day by day is kind of your like daily guide to the Whole30. It's part motivation and tips and strategies and an FAQ specific to that day. And it also gives you guided journal prompts to help you think about your non-scale victories, some of your goals for this day, and how you are tracking certain things like cravings, energy, and sleep. So on day one, I mean, it's all just like rainbows and kittens, isn't it? Everyone is so excited to start the Whole30. It feels so bright and shiny. I hope you all have some meals planned. I hope you all have some emergency food planned. I hope you all have a gym bag or a purse or a desk at work that has a few meat sticks and some olives and some pistachios or karma nuts stashed in there so you have emergency food on hand just in case. Those are things that are so incredibly important for your Whole30 success is meal planning. So in Whole30 Day by Day, we are talking about where you can find meal planning help. My first stop for meal planning on the Whole30 is Real Plans. They are our official Whole30 meal planning tool. It's an incredible website and app that lets you plan all 30 days of Whole30 meals in five minutes or less. There are almost a thousand Whole30 compatible recipes. There's also, for original, there's also a plant-based Whole30 option in Real Plans. So whether you're doing the original or the plant-based program, Real Plans can help. So I would head over to Real Plans if you're looking for more automated meal planning help. They will generate a shopping list. You can connect that shopping list to Instacart or Amazon Fresh. Their technology is so incredible and it just keeps getting better because they are so dedicated to serving the Whole30 community. So if you do use Real Plans or if you're new to Real Plans, drop a comment in the chat. Let us know how you're liking it how it's been saving you time and stress and money on your Whole30. I love that you have been using day by day for your last few Whole30s. That's the beauty of this book is that you can just reuse it if you do the Whole30 over. And you can either track your journals right there on the page in pencil and erase them or track them in pen and double down or track them in your own little journal. But yeah, I'm so glad that you found the book helpful. Um, it, this is was a few years of research into writing day by day to make sure I captured the experience that everyone is going through as closely as I can on every individual day. So thank you for sharing. So we're going to do some meal planning. If you don't use real plans, then you have a few other options. We have a seven day meal plan in the Whole30 book. So if you go to the flagship book just called The Whole30, there's a seven day meal plan in there with recipes and ingredients that we use in the book. That's seven days that will get you started. I've also seen meal plans from Danielle Walker. I've seen meal plans from Michelle Tam of Nom Nom Paleo. I just saw a week meal plan from Bill and Haley of Primal Pellet. So there are tons of Whole30 meal plans floating around on the internet with Whole30 friends and other cookbook authors and partners. Whole30 certified coaches have meal plans. So you can certainly find something available online as well. The other way that you can meal plan is by prepping ingredients and turning them into meals. This is hands down how I cook, like 
I'd say 78% of the time. I am not making a recipe. I'm just making ingredients and I'm putting them on a plate and I'm tying them together with a dressing or sauce. So if you want a meal plan and think about, okay, I'm going to cook a dozen hard boiled eggs. I'm going to make one protein salad. I'm going to, you know, brown two pounds of ground beef and I'm going to make a frittata and then I'm going to roast a bunch of vegetables to have them on the side and I'll make sure I have some fruit handy and maybe pick one or two veggies to go with a specific meal. Like, okay, one night I'm going to do ground meat with a mix of roasted veggies over spaghetti squash and I'm going to throw some pasta sauce on top and use the Whole30 approved pasta sauce from Primal Kitchen, for example. That's a really easy way to meal plan where you're thinking about what you're eating, but you're cooking just once or twice and you're making those ingredients really last throughout the week, but inserting different flavors using different sauces and dressings, which on the Whole30 sauces and dressings are life. So there are a number of ways that you can meal plan, but I do want you to have some semblance of a plan. I really don't want you to wing it. Even if you think you already eat pretty close to Whole30, what I don't want is for you to feel like you're, you know, on day three at lunch and you don't have enough food planned and you thought the restaurant next door had Whole30 compatible options, but they don't, or it's really hard to find them, or it's not what you want. And it feels unsatisfying. I don't want that for you. Even if your meal plan includes a bullet point that says, order a Whole30 salad bowl from Chipotle. Brilliant. Beautiful. That is a plan. Even if it is pull a trifecta meal out of my refrigerator for lunch. Awesome. That is a plan. You don't have to make everything at home from scratch if you don't want to. You could eat a Chipotle salad bowl every single day for lunch and be perfectly, beautifully Whole30. And if that saves you time and energy and money and stress, I think that you should do that. They are absolutely delicious. A plan doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, make a unique, gorgeous recipe from scratch and make it look Instagram worthy every single day. A plan just means I have a general plan for what I'm going to eat and I know that I have enough Whole30 compatible food around me and on me at all times so that if I do get stuck in traffic or if I do get stuck at my kids swim meet or if I am, you know, short on time between Zoom calls, I know what I'm going to eat. So planning and preparing on the Whole30 is key and the more you plan and prepare, the easier your brain will rest because the brain loves a plan. It really does. So give yourself the, give future you kind of the gift of having a meal plan and take some stress out of at least the first few days of your Whole30. Even if you're only planning two days in advance, that's a-okay. I just want you to not have to get into the moment where you're like, oh crap, it's 6.30 at night, I'm super hungry, and I haven't thought about what I'm, about what I'm gonna have for dinner. We don't want you in that position. So let's see, Brenda says, I wanna get better at ingredient meals. You know. I don't think that you have to. If you love cooking from recipes and cooking from recipes makes it easy because it takes all the guesswork out of it. You don't have to think about what veggies go with what meat and what sauce to put on it. Yeah, cook from recipes. Absolutely. But if you can also come up with even just two or three ingredient meals that you really like and that are simple, mine is always hands down. I do ground beef, I saute a bunch of vegetables. It's usually green pepper, um, red pepper, sweet onion, grape tomatoes, mushrooms, and zucchini. So that's like six different veggies in there that I saute all together. And then I mix it together and I throw it in a glass storage container unseasoned. And I will pull that out one day and I'll throw secret sauce over the top of it. And I'll pull it out another day and I'll throw a pasta sauce over the top of it. And I'll pull it out a third day and I'll put it in some Yai's Thai curry sauce. And I've cooked once and I've now had three or four different meals that all taste delicious, but I've added variety with dressings and sauces. So I think you can think about maybe just coming up with one or two ingredient meals and throwing them in the rotation. Don't also forget, like write down your meals. I have a journal that I keep all of my favorite meals, the ones that are on repeat, the ones that I make every single week. It's the smoky sweet potato chili from the Whole30 Slow Cooker book. Every week that thing is in my slow cooker and I've written it down because what happens is that I will get tired of that at some point or a new recipe will catch my eye or the season will change and I'll move on to something else, the white chicken slow cooker chili or some other meal. And then when I get stuck in a rut one day and I'm like, oh, I want to make something for dinner, but I'm not sure what to make and I'm not feeling inspired, 
I'll go back through my list of favorite meals and I'll go, oh my gosh, two years ago, I could not stop making the hamburger skillet from Whole30 Friends and Family. And I haven't made that meal in ages. And now I get really excited to make it again. So I love the idea of writing your favorite meals down, whether it's an ingredient meal or a recipe, just keep a list. And that way, if you get stuck for inspiration, you can go back to your own list. You can also, for inspiration, gosh, we do this in the Whole30 Slack channel pretty often. Somebody will say, I'm bored with my meals. I need something new. And immediately, you will get just a barrage of comments from the Whole30 HQ team. Have you made this? Have you made that? Have you tried this recipe from Danielle Walker? Have you tried this from Chiyu? So you can come to Whole30 social media. You can go to your own friend group. You can go to the Whole30 forum. You can come to my sub stack. You can go to the Whole30 whoop group where we are sharing recipes in the chat. There are a zillion different places to connect and say, I need some inspiration. I've got chicken and broccoli in my fridge. What can I make? And you will get a ton of really great ideas from there. So I do love connecting over that. Yes, Darlene loves Bailey's whole kitchen sink. I also love Bailey's recipes. She is such a solid standby for those recipes. Oh yeah, Brenda's got a Pinterest board. I love that idea. I'm not, I don't really do Pinterest. I feel like I don't really understand it very well. I never got into it, but I think Pinterest boards for stuff like this can be absolutely amazing. And if you use the right keywords and it's Whole30 and it's Whole30 recipes, you can have other people find your Pinterest board because I know for many people, Pinterest is like the source of information. So I love that idea. Fantastic. Um, Vanessa said the sound playback is fuzzy. Is it still a little fuzzy? I think what happens sometimes is that my hair gets on the microphone. So you tell me if it sounds decent now. I also had to change microphones last minute technical issues, but we're figuring it out. So hopefully the sound is pretty good at this point. So we've talked about meal planning in day by day for page one. I want to talk briefly about the idea of snacking on the Whole30. That's something else that we talk about in Whole30 day by day. In the earliest days of Whole30, I think I was a little bit more, I, I don't think I was, I was more dogmatic about like three meals a day, no snacking. And it came from a good place where I was like, you know, we're all very used to grazing like antelopes all day and mindlessly putting food in our mouth and let's let our hormones kind of do their job and give ourselves a bit of a digestive rest between meals. I still think that principle is solid. I'm not a big snacker. I don't snack during my day kind of randomly. I don't graze like an antelope. However, first of all, don't snack or, you know, don't um, or like Make sure your meals are big enough so you don't have to snack. That's not a Whole30 rule. That's just a recommendation. And what I've realized is for many people, if you have a unique work schedule, if you're a teacher, if you're a nurse, if or a doctor, if you have a job where you know, you've got these long breaks between lunch and dinner and you can't make your lunch big enough to tide you over... Or if you just like the idea of throwing another smaller meal in there, or if you're active and you need a pre-workout meal and a post-workout meal, go ahead and have a snack, especially in the first couple weeks of the Whole30 as you are figuring out your hunger, how hungry you are, how big your meals need to be. It can be really common for you to under eat at breakfast and then realize by 11 a.m. that you're hungry again, but lunch isn't scheduled until 1.00 go ahead and have a mini meal in there. A few general recommendations for snacks or mini meals. I love for them to include at least two out of the three basic macronutrients. So protein, fat, and carbs. Ideally, you're not just eating a piece of fruit. Carbs by themselves are not particularly satiating. And if the plan of a mini meal, if the point is to get you through to the next meal, then I want you to have something that's actually going to tide you over. So think about combining at least two of those three macronutrients. So it may look like a protein and a fat. Maybe it's a meat stick and dipped in some almond butter or chitel cream cheese. Think about a carb and a fat. So maybe it's an apple and some almond butter, or maybe it's carrot sticks and guacamole. You can have any combination, or maybe it's all three, protein, fat, and carbs. It's hard-boiled eggs with a side of cashews and some strawberries. But make sure that that mini meal is satiating enough to tide you over until the next meal. 
And again, ideally, you're not grazing like an antelope all day. We're not like picking some cashews here and picking a hard-boiled egg here. The best practice really is to focus on three or four, depending on your activity levels, meals a day, and give yourself a couple hours between meals to allow your digestion and hormones to do their job. But if you want to snack, go ahead and snack, right? There's no, if you're actually hungry, go ahead and have a snack. If you are a pregnant person, a nursing person, a doing the Whole30 with your kids, if your job is really active or you're an active individual, you might need to throw some mini meals in there. I tend to eat a mini meal every day between lunch and dinner because lunch is pretty early, dinner is pretty late, and that's where I'll do my meat stick with kite cream cheese and some pistachios, and that works really, really well for me. So that's a bit more information about snacking and meals just to make sure that you know the difference between the Whole30 program rules and recommendations. How are we doing? Let us know, let me know in the chat if you have any questions, if you need any inspiration or any guidance on day one of your Whole30. I could talk about the Whole30 for literally hours. I do, in fact, for literally hours. But I want to make sure that your questions are answered, that you're feeling motivated, inspired, that if you've got any, do you have a special situation, a challenging situation coming up, a stressful situation that I could help you with, or I could help you create an if-then plan for, make sure you drop that in the chat, in the comments. You do have to be subscribed to the Whole30 YouTube channel to leave a comment. So if you are watching but not yet subscribed, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and that will let you drop a comment in the chat right away. So hopefully, we'll get some good questions in there. Going back to Whole30 day by day, so we've talked about meal planning. We've talked about snacking. Um, I am in the middle right now of writing an article that will come out on Thursday. It's Thursday's Dear Melissa article. So it will come out on Whole30 Day 4. And I'm going to talk about motivation on the Whole30. There's a little tip on page 22 of Whole30 Day by Day that talks about setting small mini goals, achievable wins, and kind of rewarding yourself along the way. And by rewarding, I don't mean taking yourself out for a pedicure or buying a new pair of shoes. I mean like in the moment, high-fiving yourself for like, I just made this breakfast, it looks amazing, sell five. Or I went out to happy hour with my colleagues and I had an amazing time and I just drank my sparkling water and lime and it felt so great, high five. So we talk about that in Whole30 Day by Day, and I'm writing an article about it now. So if you subscribe to the Whole30 email list, you're going to get that in your inbox on Thursday. And that's going to be a Dear Melissa article that I am almost done with right now. Uh, okay, I don't see any other questions in the chat. I'm happy to keep chatting and talking and making sure that you have all of the planning and support that you need. I am going to scroll back through the comments and make sure I haven't missed anything. Most of you are here. Hopefully you're watching during your lunch break. We tried to schedule these as close to lunch between West Coast and East Coast as we could. Wonderful. Okay, so in Whole30 Day by Day, the very last kind of piece of advice for day one there's like a little bit of extra credit that I give every day of the book. And your extra credit for today is to create a thorough meal plan for tomorrow. So the meal plan should include your three meals a day, your mini meals, but then don't forget emergency food and on-the-go food. So I'm talking about both at home and if you are out and about in the wild. I think people often overlook the need to have something quick and easy to eat at home. We think about meat sticks, we think about olives, we think about nuts and seeds, things that are portable to throw in our purse or gym bag. But I always have something Whole30 compatible that is so quick to grab. Like I can make lunch any day of the week in 10 minutes flat like not even 10 minutes, with things that I always have in my fridge. So maybe that's a trifecta meal. Maybe it's hard-boiled eggs. Maybe it's deli turkey and some sliced-up veggies. Maybe it's leftover frittata. Maybe you always double your dinner so you have leftovers for the next day to make sure you've got food in your fridge. But don't forget about the idea of having Whole30 compatible food at home as well that you can grab and go if you need those really quick lunches or really quick dinners. I think that's a really good place 
to think about your meal plan for the next day. Let's see. Oh, Erin wants to know the threat. Yes, we do. The Thrive Market coupon code. That's actually the last thing or one of the last things I wanted to rem remember to tell you today is that if you are watching this live or you're watching it during the week of January 2nd, 2023, Thrive Market is having their biggest sale of the year. 30% off. They don't do any sales bigger than 30% off. More than like hundreds of Whole30 compatible and approved products. All of your favorites are on sale. The entire Made by Whole30 line of salad dressings, 30% off. Primal Kitchen stuff, Chomps stuff, Nut Pods, all of the kind of delicious dressings and sauces that I just talked about, Yai's Thai, 30% off. So you can, there you go, Whole30 just dropped the link in the chat. Um, it is 30% off for all members. So you can join Thread Market if you want to, or if you're already a member, you can stock up and save 30% on a ton of different products. And they make it really easy to find Whole30 approved and compatible goods using their filters. But that is a wonderful place to stock up on pantry goods, pantry staples like extra virgin olive oil and coconut aminos and ghee, dressings, sauces, Whole30 emergency foods, bone broths. I mean, Thrive Market has it all. It's one-stop shopping. Their prices are already lower than retail. So many things are 30% off right now, and it gets delivered straight to your doorstep. And they have a really amazing subscribe feature. So you never run out of Primal Kitchen Mayo or your snack, you know, chomp snack sticks or the things that you use on a really regular basis. So Thrive Market link is live. I know, Mikey, I've been waiting to place my order because I knew that this sale was coming and I am absolutely stocking up. And sometimes things do run out. Sometimes they do go out of stock. Um, so definitely make sure you join the Thrive Market um, through this link and start shopping. Yes, it's my favorite sale every year too, Brittany. I know. And they also have amazing home products. They've got skincare products. They've got home cleaning products. So I sometimes will throw in their dishwashing liquid or their, you know, their soap. They have this like seaweed or charcoal soap bar that I really like that I've been ordering from them pretty regularly. So Thrive Market is the place to be. Any other questions or comments, go ahead and drop them in the chat. I'm ready here for you. We're going to be here live just about every day of the January Whole30 so that I can offer you support, advice, answer your questions, like provide basically personalized advice. So you can't really get this in too many places. Yeah, you can send me a DM on Instagram and if I see it quickly enough, I can reply. But if you're doing the Whole30 right now, and there's anything you want to know about how you can make your program more successful, how you can make it less stressful, how you can make it easier, products, foods, Whole30 approved partners, drop it in the chat. And it doesn't matter when you show up. It really doesn't, Jennifer, no sweat. Um, this is just like a very open conversation. So GT Kombucha does have some Whole30 compatible options. You just want to read your labels to make sure that sugar is not in the ingredient list. Kombucha is kind of one of those strange food groups related to the Whole30 in that many manufacturers do list the sugar used in the fermentation process in the ingredients, which technically rules it out for the Whole30. You can also buy Whole30 approved hum kombucha. So hum is our official Whole30 approved kombucha partner. And they have found a way, it took probably a year of R&D, but they have found a way to make kombucha without the added sugar. They're using fruit as their fermentation base. And they come in four or five different flavors. They rotate in and out seasonally. Um, hopefully we do have a, I know we have a Whole30 link to Hum Kombucha on our website. So I'll ask someone to drop that into the chat. But that's another, and they're sold in my local Sprouts. You can also find them online, but... Hum is another go-to where it's like absolutely guaranteed 100% Whole30 compatible if you look for the Hum cans with the Whole30 logo on the front. So we love. Sydney wants to know my Whole30 snacks on the go. Okay, right now I'm very into Chomp Snack Sticks. I love their turkey pepperoni flavor, but I also really love Aoba Drewers. So I don't, this is a Whole30 approved brand. They've been a fan, they've been a favorite of mine for many years since before they were even Whole30 approved. It is a South African recipe 
that was developed in the founder's grandfather's kitchen that he then rolled forward and started to create these drawers. I think I'm saying it right. Or is it drove? Oh gosh, now I'm not sure I'm saying it right. Drovers? Drovers? I'm going to have to Google that as soon as this call is up. But they are these delicious beef meat sticks that come in a pack of like six and they're really high protein. You can also find those at Thrive Market. So I like a meat stick on the go, pistachios or cashews. So I really like karma nuts. They are these wrapped cashews. They kind of have their sort of natural casing left on. So there's extra crunch and they're totally delicious and also Whole30 approved, The um, just the plain flavor. And then I've been doing either like sometimes dried mango or sometimes I'll take an RX bar. Sometimes I'll pack like just normal fruit with me, a container of raspberries. I'll just throw them in my purse with an elastic to make sure they don't open or an apple. But that's sort of my go-to. It's like a piece of fruit or some veggies on the side, some nuts and seeds and some meat sticks. I include protein in every single meal. Every snack, every meal has some kind of protein, whether it's a hard boiled egg or meat sticks or deli turkey. I, again, like, I run better on a lot of protein because I'm really active and I find if I include protein in my snacks, I am far more satisfied and satiated and all those meat sticks are just really easy to carry. So I stock up on all of those at Thrive Market, of course. Yeah, the karma nuts are unbelievable. I haven't tasted anything like them. The, the special wrapping is delicious and absolutely so crunchy and gorgeous. Um, yes, you've started brewing your own kombucha. I think that's wonderful. I made for the first time, um, I made my own pickled cabbage. We did like taco night here at my house for Christmas dinner. It was just my husband and I. And so I did the orange cumin carnitas from Whole30 Friends and Family Cookbook. And then I pickled some cabbage and we made a pineapple salsa and it was absolutely delicious. All of that to say, I think at-home fermentation is fantastic. And I love that idea. Michelle wants to know about skipping your multi. Um, I want you to read your labels of your multi just to make sure that all of the ingredients are Whole30 compatible. Some multivitamins include dairy components. Some of them include corn components, like in the capsule itself. There are plenty of really high quality brands that do not include any of those ingredients and they are Whole30 compatible. So Thorne, T-H-O-R-N-E, makes a Whole30 multivitamin, Whole30 compatible multivitamin. Mind Body Greens multivitamin is also Whole30 compatible and I really love the ingredient list that goes in there. They, both of these that I just mentioned contain folate and not folic acid. So folate is sort of the preferred um, form of folic compared to folic acid and they both contain k2 which is a really helpful vitamin for vitamin d um, absorption so both of those i think are really great options and i if you have a compatible vitamin multivitamin go ahead and keep taking it it would be wonderful if we could get all of the micronutrients we needed just by eating whole real food and also it's probably realistic to think that we could use supplementation because of a variety of factors. Even if we're cooking all of our own food at home, the soil that our food is grown in has been depleted of micronutrients, vitamins and or minerals, and specifically just over time and because of the pesticides that we use. If we dine out, there's a chance that the restaurant food that we're eating or the oil that it's cooked in is not as optimally healthy as the oils we might use at home. If we're stressed, our body is going to kind of wail through certain minerals far more fa far faster. So I think there are a variety of circumstances in which a multivitamin can be relatively affordable. It's not pushing real food off your plate. The worst thing that's going to happen is it's not going to be like super additive, but the best thing that could happen is that it could be supportive of your already healthy whole food based whole 30 diet. So find a multi that feels accessible to you that meets whole 30 compatibility. And if you want to keep taking it, absolutely, you should keep taking it. Thank you for the question. That was a good one. And yes, the karma nuts are part of the whole 30 sale. Um, I think maybe I'll write an article, an updated article about supplementation on the whole 30, because it's been coming up quite a bit in preparation for the January whole 30. People are like, what supplements do you recommend? What should I take? 
obviously you always want to check with your healthcare practitioner before you start any new supplement regimen. That's just a given. Any new dietary or lifestyle change, you want to check with your doctor, your registered dietitian, somebody who's qualified to advise you. And if you have lab work, even better. You know, I just got my vitamin D3 tested about two weeks ago. My levels are still kind of low. Based on that, my supplementation schedule is changing specific to my lab results. If you don't have specific lab results, there are some general supplements that I think most people benefit from taking. They are, again, not going to push real food off your plate. They're very broad in terms of their application. They're based on the general research that suggests that, like, yeah, most people could be deficient here. So a multivitamin is a good one. Vitamin D3 is another one that I see recommended basically all the time. Um, if you live north of about the Atlanta line in the winter, the sun doesn't get high enough in the sky for the rays to penetrate and produce vitamin D3 in your body. So even if you are standing outside in the middle of winter here in Salt Lake City, buck naked, you're still not producing vitamin D3 based on the sun's angle in the sky. So supplementing, especially in the winter, can be really helpful. Magnesium is something that I supplement with every single day. According to research, again, most people are magnesium deficient. Stress, chronic stress is one of those conditions in which your body ends up kind of going through magnesium very quickly. And adding a magnesium supplement in the evening before you go to sleep can be a really helpful way to help you fall asleep and stay asleep longer, particularly in an, a bioavailable form like a magnesium glycinate. Probiotics are another supplement that I recommend pretty often. Again, gut health is incredibly important and everything from stress to antibiotic use can affect our gut biome. So supplementing with a good probiotic. I like the probiotic strains from Dr. Michael Ruscio. He's a dear friend of mine. He wrote what I would consider sort of the gut health book. Um, and now I'm blanking on the title. That's concussion, but that's okay. Dr. Michael Ruscio is the name of the doctor and he wrote a fantastic book on gut health, but he has this sort of three probiotic blend, a soil-based, uh, I think a bifido-based, and a saccharomyces-based. I might not be saying that correctly, but taking all three together can be really beneficial, and that's the supplement regimen that I've been on with him for many, many years. Um, and then collagen. I think collagen can be another really helpful supplement in that collagen contains micronutrients, minerals, and especially amino acids that aren't found in high concentrations in the muscle meat that we are eating. So they can provide a very complementary source of protein to the animal protein that we are eating, whether that comes from bovine collagen or marine collagen. And I think it can just be a nice way to add a little extra protein in your day. So you can get an extra 10 grams of protein per scoop. That's nice. But it also can be, and I've heard people talk about the benefits for skin, for hair, for nails, for gut health and digestion. So that's another supplement where it's like coming from a whole food. It's not pushing real food off your plate. It feels pretty accessible. And I've heard many people talk about the benefits. So those are some general supplements that I might recommend. Thank you, Vanessa. Healthy gut, healthy you. I knew it was something like that. Um, so yes, and yeah. Magnesium. I've been taking um, magnesium a lot more religiously, and I have noticed it's made a really big difference in my mental health, too. I feel like I just have a bit more capacity to manage stress since I've been taking it. Um, I take some in the morning, and I take a different form at night before I go to bed. So I don't have, I don't think we have the supplement information that I just talked about on the website. I know I talked about supplements in the Whole30 book, and that's a good place to go for resources, and I don't think my supplementation suggestions have changed much since then. Like it's always been D3. It's always been a multi. It's always been probiotics. But the brands that I've recommended have changed as new products have evolved. So that's something that I will write up maybe for a Dear Melissa newsletter um, or a Whole30 blog post. I'll talk to my content team. We'll get that written down. We'll share some links. And if you do want to start supplementing and your healthcare provider says it's a good idea, um, I'll get you the info. Um, in one way or the other. Jeanette wants to know, let's see, where do you add in your bone broth? 
So, of course, you can add bone broth into a number of recipes. You'll find it in a number of soups, in a number of stews, in, you know, kind of like the, if you're cooking sort of chicken and veggies in a pan, very often you'll add bone broth. If you make, I add bone broth to my cauliflower rice. So instead of cooking it just in water, I'll cook it in some bone broth, and I find that that makes a really delicious flavor. But I also drink a mug of bone broth every afternoon. Every afternoon after lunch, when I feel like I just want something warm, but I don't drink caffeine, I, maybe I could make an herbal tea. I just find that bone broth is my go-to. I've been drinking Fawn's bone broth, F-O-N-D. They make absolutely delicious flavors with a variety of veggies and fresh herbs. They're the only bone broth that is regenerative agriculture certified. It's a women-owned company. They ship in glass jars. Like there's nothing not to love about Fond, but I just drink a mug in the afternoon. And that can also add an extra seven to 14 grams of protein into your day. So if you're looking for ways to sneak extra protein in, bone broth is a great way. Collagen supplements are a great way. You can easily get an extra 20 grams of protein in your day if you are just adding a collagen supplement and drinking a mug of broth. So I'll pour half a jar into a coffee mug, I'll heat it in the microwave, and I'll just sip on it on the after in the afternoon. And it's really delicious and it's really warm. And that's my favorite way to enjoy bone broth. So you can think of it kind of like a delicious mid-afternoon treat. Or you can do it in the morning if you want another cup of something warm but you don't want a second coffee or like the extra caffeine in your day. Yes, magnesium. I will recommend some different brands of magnesium. I need to do a little more research before I do this. The brand that I use in the morning is called Magteen, and it's a proprietary form that is supposed to be highly bioavailable. I use a magnesium glycinate at home in the evenings for sleep. You can use a magnesium citrate form that can be, um, that can help your digestion move. So if you find that you are feeling a little constipated or things are moving a little more slowly, adding a magnesium citrate supplement can have a bit of a very gentle laxative effect. So that can be helpful. I'll do a little bit more research and recommend some specific brands and forms in that article that I write. So thank you for asking. Um, okay, if you don't like the flavor of a Whole30 mayo made by Primal Kitchen, that's kind of our official like Whole30 approved partner, make your own. Making your own mayo is so much easier and so cost effective. I mean, before Primal Kitchen made mayo, all we had was to make our own. And we were all whipping up mayo with our hand blenders in our kitchens. It is five ingredients you can make it in five minutes flat. There is an article on the Whole30 website. If you visit Whole30.com and you search for Perfect Mayo, it's our recipe and it is all the tips and tricks to have your mayo turn out absolutely creamy and dreamy and beautiful. And if you're making it yourself, you can always adjust the flavor to your preference. You can add a little bit more lemon if you want. You can throw some fresh herbs in there. You can whip up a mayo and add a hot sauce, and now you've got sort of a buffalo mayo or a chipotle mayo. So making your mayo yourself, there's also a recipe in the Whole30 book. I think in every cookbook I've published, there's a recipe for making your own mayo. But absolutely make your own. I love Primal Kitchen mayo. I think it tastes absolutely delicious. I have a huge jar from Costco in my fridge right now. But making your own mayo is hands down the best. It tastes the best, I think, and it is so cost effective and so quick and easy. And yes, as Brenda is saying here, an immersion blender is a game changer. So an immersion blender is like one of those hand blenders. It just looks like a stick with some blades on the bottom and you get like a nice tall container. I think I use a really tall measuring cup for mine, but you can also use a kind of bowl and it allows you to whip the mayo way easier than hand blending. I've also seen people use blenders just fine, but I think immersion blenders are the way to go if you're making your own mayo and then drizzling the oil in very, very slowly to allow it to emulsify. But again, the whole thing is like five minutes and it's so delicious and it's so easy. So that's what I think that you should do. Thank you for that tip there for the immersion blender. Sydney wants to know, sunflower oil, canola, etc., in pre-made items. 
So first of all, none of those ingredients are off limits for the Whole30. Um, there's no issue whatsoever with compatibility with sunflower oil, safflower oil, or canola oil. I will also say this. In the earliest days of Whole30 and Paleo, we went pr pretty hard. Experts went pretty hard that vegetable oils were going to kill you dead. The researchers, the experts of the time, I mean, you're still seeing a lot of that today in health and wellness where people are railing against canola oil. They're railing against sunflower, railing against safflower. Here's the thing. I have come to realize the science doesn't bear that out. The science does not bear out the idea that a scotch of sunflower oil or safflower oil or canola in your restaurant meal or your Trader Joe's pre-made pasta sauce or whatever it comes in, the research does not support that we should be fearful of these items. Are there oils with healthier fat profiles that you could use at home? Absolutely. Yes. Avocado oil, high in monounsaturated fat, heart-healthy monounsaturated fats. It's a great choice to use at home. Extra virgin olive oil, same. Cultured oil, like Zero Acre Farms, they are new, innovative, cultured oil. Impeccable fat profiles. Super safe to cook, even at high heat. That oil is like the gold standard. Yes, absolutely use that at home. High oleic, sunflower or safflower oil, also incredibly high in monounsaturated fat and very different from their non-high oleic versions. Fantastic options, top shelf options. However, I am not at all worried about canola oil, sunflower oil, or safflower oil in your restaurant meals. I'm not worried about it in your Whole30 compatible products. I'm not worried about it in your light olive oil, in your olive uh, homemade mayo, because you can't use extra virgin olive oil in your homemade mayo. It tastes way too heavy. You need to use like a light olive oil, safflower or sunflower are, are really cost effective oils to use in your homemade mayo. I'm not worried about it at all, one bit. And I don't think that you should be either. There's probably more to say on this because I know if you read It Starts With Food, the impression that you have of these industrial seed oils is probably that they should be avoided at all costs. But the science evolves. Our voice evolves as we work and have worked for the last decade to make the program more accessible and more inclusive. And we, I'm not, I'm not afraid to change my mind about things and to say, yeah, we went real hard on this back in the day and we wouldn't do that today because we know different now. So I love that question. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. And in summary, if you've got a Trader Joe's pre-made item that you love and it's got some safflower, sunflower, or canola oil in it, go on with it. Absolutely. And enjoy. Yes, it, it should. It absolutely does. Make it easier to grab. Absolutely. Um, grapeseed oil is compatible too. Yeah, it absolutely is. Grapeseed oil is one of those where I wouldn't recommend that you cook with it because it is high in those more fragile polyunsaturated fats. And it's not, although I don't know about the smoke point of grapeseed oil. I should look that up first before I say don't cook with it. I'll do a little bit more digging there. I don't see this one come up very often, to be perfectly honest. But yes, it is completely Whole30 compatible. And if you want to use it in your recipes, or if you want to use it in a product, then you should absolutely feel free to use it. No problem. Exactly. All right. Well, now you've got me thinking about the smoke point of grapeseed. I think maybe the smoke point is kind of high, but it also has a lot of polyunsaturated fat, which makes it less stable when exposed to air, heat, and light. So there may be a bit of a dichotomy there, but haven't heard about grapeseed oil in a while. So you've got me thinking now. Let me go back through the comments and make sure I did not forget anything. My to-do list is going to be to write that article for you about supplements on the Whole30. And maybe I'll tap some of my MD friends to help me write that too. I know Mind Body Green has a really good article on the best forms of magnesium. I can definitely top Dr. Ruscio to talk about probiotics. So I will work on that for you. All right, before we wrap up to the day, do, do thank you, Alyssa. There you go. Prized for its high. So I was right. It does have a higher smoke point, but it's also higher in polyunsaturated fat, 
which means you do have to be more careful when you expose it to air, heat, and light for cooking. So thank you. That is perfect. Let's do one last question from Michelle. If the ingredients has adds a negligible amount of sugar, can we use it? So the important thing for you to remember about added sugar on the Whole30 when it comes to the rules is that you want to look at what's in the ingredient list, not what's in the nutrition facts panel. So sometimes you'll see sugar in the ingredient list in the very last ingredient, which means it's added in just a tiny amount, but the nutrition facts panel might still say zero because it's rounding down because it adds such a negligible amount. The important thing to know is that if there is any form of added sugar in the ingredient list, it is out for your Whole30. If you see added sugar X grams on the nutrition fact panel, that doesn't automatically rule it out. Because on the nutrition fact panel, the FDA requires, or USDA rather, requires um, like fruit concentrate or... Um, some forms of fruit to be counted as added sugar, which are completely Whole30 compatible. So I don't want you to go by the Nutrition Facts panel. I want you to go by the ingredient list. And if there's any form of added sugar, even if it's in the very last position, even if there's a little addendum, unfortunately, added sugar in the ingredient list rules it out for your Whole30 elimination. So that's what you want to pay attention to there. Perfect. Okay. All right, well, if we don't have any more questions, thank you for joining me for this day one YouTube Live. This has been really fun. I'll be back here tomorrow, same time, same YouTube Live. Um, probably wear a different shirt. Maybe I'll adjust my microphone with my husband's help so it doesn't sound so, um, doesn't get in the way of my hair, but we're gonna figure it out. I hope the rest of your whole 30 day one goes amazing. Before you leave, please like the video that goes a long way to helping YouTube push it out to other people who are interested in the Whole30. Make sure you subscribe to the Whole30 YouTube channel because we've got a lot of really fun content coming out. We've got shorts. We've got other videos about the Whole30. And then, of course, we'll be doing these lives almost every single day at this time. And if you liked the video, share it with someone else that you know is doing a Whole30 right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Lorraine, Michelle, thanks, Alyssa. Good to see all of you. And this video, if you missed any portion of it, will be available in the replay on the Whole30 YouTube channel. So thanks for joining me, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day.